Absolutely, and, and so good to speak to you after such a long time, Steve. And look, I think the Saudis are being cautious. It's in their nature, and I think they absolutely don't want to repeat what happened last year. Pretty much, like you said, this time last year. Uh, because, you know, Abdulaziz keeps saying the, the referee hasn't blown the whistle yet. There are variants around. We're still not out of lockdowns, which is true. You know, a lot of the oil price rally has been based on the optimism of the demand recovery in the second half. Whereas the Saudis are focused on actually getting the inventories or OECD inventories down to the five-year average, which we're not there yet. It's still around 100 million barrels higher. So they are laser focused on getting that figure down to the average number. Yeah, but I think there is one factor here as well. I mean, there, were, there are many factors. That's what makes the whole thing so delicious. But it's, it's the 8 million barrels of spare capacity from OPEC+, Plus, including Iran, which I think is absolutely tantalising. They know they're against the clock. And despite the fact that the energy transition is going to be a lot slower than a lot of the renewable advocates and governments think it will be, the fact of the matter is they've got 8 million barrels a day just sitting there in the ground that they're desperate to get out as well. Can the uh, Saudis corral everyone to stop putting more oil onto the market in the short term? I think that's the biggest challenge. And I understand that it's not just April that they're talking about. They're essentially saying to everybody, look, it's April and May, just like they did in January, right? They discussed Feb and March output. Um, and they're saying it's too early to raise production. We all have spare capacity. Let's start increasing in May. We will have more visibility. Of course, UAE, Russia exactly like you're saying they said we need to start raising production iran big elephant in the room they're going to start coming back u.s producers while they're not going to grow nearly to the levels that we've seen before they will start growing at wti 60 dollars so this is this constant tussle particularly russia is concerned about shale um, and i think that's exactly why they're saying why should we just hold on to spare capacity when the others will come back and we will have to compete with them and Marita, you just mentioned in the United States there, that deep freeze we saw in Texas took out about a fifth of a refining capacity in the United States. So what's the ongoing impact from that as we talk about uh, whether the taps will be turned on a little bit more from some of these OPEC plus producers? It's been a huge uh, event, right? And I think in, in one fell sweep, it's effectively accelerated the rebalancing of the oil market that was already going on. Uh, we lost about 30 million barrels of crude production, which rarely happens in hurricanes. And there are still refineries that are offline. So it's really helping to draw down gasoline stocks. You saw yesterday in the EIA stats, gasoline and diesel both fell huge amounts. And that's going to continue for some time. So indirectly, that is supportive for crude, particularly for European refiners. You know, they've really, really struggled. It's not that you know suddenly margins will go up. There's too much refining capacity, but it does provide them with a little bit of lifeline, particularly gasoline, because Europe does produce a lot of that. Amrita, what's your read on the geopolitical backdrop to where the oil price heads next here? Because this administration has come out fairly forcefully on both the issue of the uh, Kasoji murder and citing who they believe is the chief culprit for that, MBS. And now we've got fresh sanctions on the Russians over the treatment of Mr Navalny. All of this suggests that there's going to continue to be friction between these key states in the energy complex. 100% and this is a new regime and I think Biden has made that very clear. Uh, these are new rules um, and he's also made it very clear he's going to rejoin the JCPOA. I think Saudi Arabia knows that. Um, I think for me, this is exactly what Steve was pointing out, it's the spare capacity issue. You know, we are expecting spare capacity to continue dropping through the course of this year and next year as demand recovers. I think that's when these things become important and overall geopolitics, how the region plays uh, again, with Iran coming back, where the geopolitical tensions go up, because I think non-OPEC supplies are struggling so much. And because of the focus on energy transition, there's no investment going in at all. And I think you can see some real price spikes next year, um, particularly if, you know, again, tensions are brewing. U.S. relations with Saudi, U.S. relations with Russia um, are not, not rosy. And I don't think they're going to necessarily become better um, over the course of the next four years.